Over the course of its 4.5 billion years, Earth has gone through some pretty significant changes. Insectophobes can celebrate the fact that humanity's time on this planet mercifully came a full 360 million years after the period when Earth was covered in Meganeura. Predatory Dragonflies with two-foot-long wingspans. At the same time, the Lung Scorpion, a scorpion the size of a skateboard, scurried around beneath these giant dragonflies accompanied by the eight-foot-long Arthropleura millipede. This terrible time on planet Earth is known as the Carboniferous Period. During the Carboniferous, numerous new insect families developed on Earth, with many insect species growing to incredible sizes. The largest dragonfly in the world today is Tetracanthigena plagiata. Its wingspan can measure up to seven inches, and it weighs seven grams or 0.015 pounds. By today's standards, that makes Tetracanthigena plagiata a giant, but by the standards of past megabugs, today's largest dragonfly is tiny. That's because the skies of 300 million years ago were ruled by Meganeura. Mega is in the name for a reason. Meganeuropsis permiana buzzed around planet Earth about 298 million years ago during the Permian period. The largest of all the giant bugs of prehistory, Meganeuropsis permiana is the monstrous distant relative of the dragonflies you see today. It can grow to have a wingspan of 28 inches, and from head to tail, it measured 17 inches. Scorpions aren't insects, but rather members of the arachnids. However, if we're going to look at megabugs of the past, we need to include a look at Pulmonoscorpius, a scorpion that could reach up to 28 inches in length and live on land. The superficial morphology of Pulmonoscorpius is that of a larger version of today's scorpions, although its proportionally larger eyes have led to the suggestion that it may have been a more visually oriented hunter. It is impossible to say how toxic the venom of Pulmonoscorpius would have been. But a good rule of thumb is that the smaller the pincers are in relation to the thickness of the tail, the more potent the venom, with the thicker tails holding larger amounts. This holds true for today's scorpions with those that have small pincers and fat tails being more feared by people who have become accustomed to their presence. For comparison, the largest scorpion alive today is the giant forest scorpion, which reaches just 9 inches. Ancient scorpions that lived below the seas got even larger. The giant sea scorpion which lived during this era reached more than 8 feet in length. Once again, arthropods are different than insects, but they were truly ancient megabugs that would be shocking by today's standards. Arthropleura was a genus similar to today's millipedes. The big difference is that by today's standards, they were positively supersized. Arthropleura was perhaps the largest arthropod of the Carboniferous and was overall among the largest arthropods that ever lived, measuring on average between 6.6 .6 and 10 feet or 2 to 3 meters long, as large as a man or crocodile and as long as a car. However, there were very rare colossal specimens that were discovered to have measured around 20 feet or 6 meters in length. Arthropleura was heavily defended by thick, tough, and wide armor plating along its back. Underneath its armor were lots of small legs and a soft underbelly. The body of the Arthropleura was composed of 30 armored plates, which each had a pair of legs under them. However, it was not invincible as large amphibians, like Proterogeronus, could relatively easily get the better of it. Even its own environment could threaten it. Sharp rocks could easily impale Arthropleura, and the superpowered carnivorous storms were often devastating to Arthropleura as well as other animals. Today, you might consider an insect big if it's the length of your finger. About 150 million years ago, big bugs suddenly began to shrink back down. This also coincides nicely with the appearance of the first birds whose prey of choice would have been the ubiquitous, slow-moving, and protein-rich bugs. 
under assault from flying predators. Being large was no longer an advantage, and insect sizes were reduced to a mere still way too big, rather than gargantuan. About 260 million years ago, fungi and microbial life evolved to digest wood. The trees that had not yet been converted into coal were quickly digested, and their carbon was released back into the atmosphere. This leveled out the ratio of carbon to oxygen in the air. Without favorable atmospheric conditions, and with the pressures of predation, insects could no longer afford to maintain their massive sizes and gradually shrank to the more manageable sizes we are familiar with. Fortunately, there's a distant lack of eight-foot-long millipedes today. The reasons why these critters could exist at all and why they are gone now are still being debated by scientists, but there are a few likely factors worth mentioning. Theory 1. The Exoskeleton While humans and animals carry their skeletons on the inside, insects are rather unique, bearing exoskeletons. This means that their shells, or the outer layer of their bodies are, in fact, their skeletons. For a long time, it's been speculated that the larger an insect grows, the heavier the exoskeleton would be, therefore limiting the creature's ability to grow beyond a certain size. In truth, however, there is very limited data backing up this hypothesis, and, out of the data that does exist, the facts do not strongly support this theory. Theory 2. Oxygen Not only do insects have very different skeletal structures than humans and animals, but they also breathe in a very different way. Insects possess a series of holes along the length of their bodies that take oxygen into inner tubes called tracheoles. Tracheoles spread throughout the body, getting as small as a micron in size to diffuse oxygen in a cellular level throughout the insect. Dr. John Harrison, an entomologist at Arizona State University, states that this very phenomenon could be the limiting factor in the size of insects. The larger the insect, the longer the canals of tracheals would have to be, making it substantially more difficult to properly disperse oxygen throughout the insect's body. But why were there large insects in the past? Clearly, it wasn't problematic at one point. The Paleozoic Atmosphere the percentage of oxygen in our atmosphere today is roughly 21%. This was not the case in the past, however. Geologists conducted a study in which it was discovered that in the late Paleozoic era, the percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere rose to at least 32% oxygen. This eliminates problems with tracheals, allowing the larger bugs to breathe with ease due to the plethora of oxygen in the atmosphere at the time. This is just a theory, however. Dr. Harrison states that we don't have any definitive answers yet as to why large insects no longer exist, but that this is the most convincing theory so far. Regardless, we can probably all agree that, whatever the case is, we are glad that they don't exist today. Bugs are big enough as it is. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.